Hello, everyone. Welcome back to 2024 Spring Semester JCS Podcast Go. Well, as we all know, on March 1st, a very important day. It was a very important day. What day was it? The day Korean was it? Independence Day. Yes, the Korean Independence Day. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So we're going to talk about mainly focusing on what the Korean Independence Day is all about and what the U.S. or the American Independence is all about. So we're going to share about the history, about some of the important people, and then what we think are similar between the two countries' fight for independence because there are a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. And we would just like to share that with everybody on our opinions. Okay, so we're going to start with the first sector. So we're going to talk about the history of the Korean independence. So each of the students are going to talk about what what point of time they thought was the most important and why. All right, if you want to start, Jace? I think the Korean independence day was important because the, Co- the Korean people mm-hmm. showed courage and the cor- courage to have their country back mm-hmm. and the tough feeling that they they should have independence yes so that kind of like the final urge to be you know be not controlled by another group of people yes. all right what do you think chloe the important mm-hmm. what is the most important part okay i think the most important part of Korean Independence Day was that with their confidence, mm-hmm. with their the mind mm-hmm. or heart of being loved, mm-hmm. their country, they, I, th- I think there was no like guns or like ammunition, mm-hmm. and they just go, they just went with their body, with their confidence, mm-hmm. so. Because of that, they got, they, because of, that was the one part of getting free. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and young students got their, like, got heart, a lot of heart too, Mm -hmm. and wounds. But they did their best to, to help, Mm -hmm. to get, to, to yell out for freedom. Mm, that's definitely important. How about you, Tom? I think most interesting about Korean industry is fighting for defense for a long time mm-hmm. and people get into jail and they didn't stop doing that was most I think it is interesting. Nice, definitely the perseverance of the people. How about you, Sua? Um, the Korean have some time for other other country mm-hmm. uh, said come to our country and uh, we will we will get some food and some good things for. Mm-hmm. The Korea and Japan was saying to same with that and Korea Korea was hate that because Korea has one trauma for that so so they the coming one day and the Japanese kill some people and and the the time was the Korea in that. Yeah. Well, you Lucy. Mm. Mm. What do you think was like the most important part of the revolution? I think for that people's 
for Korean people, they want their freedom and their Korea, their country back. So I think they did their best to did they did their best to be free. Uh, yeah, and then Luna. Yes. What do you think? I think the one of the most important things are like, even though they were dying and getting tortured by Japan, they loved their country and they kept mm-hmm. kept fighting. Also, mm-hmm. I think it uh, how brave they were is also important. Yes, the bravery. Um, and I think Chloe mentioned something that was very, um, very unique. I think towards the entire world and every different country's road to revol- road to freedom is that there doesn't seem to be a lot of physical, amu- like gunfire, in the Korean independence, and that's, you know, that's very rare when it comes to, you know, being free from another country. Do you think this is a you know this is we didn't write this question down but do you think the lack of gunfire was one of the reasons why Korea was able to be independent so quickly right cuz for many many other countries you know their fight for revolution can go up to 10 years right do you think that's one of the reasons why it's one of the shorter independences so uh, what is the fire gun? Fire. Ammunition. So it's guns and like bombs and those types mm. of weapons, right? Korea didn't use any of those according, you know, as far as I can find. So do you think that's one of the reasons why we were able to gain freedom so quickly? Yes. I think it is one of vision, yes. Mm-hmm. Because... There was very brave behavior to Mm -hmm. Japan Mm -hmm. and they thought Korean is a very great loving country people in there. Mm -hmm. So I think they thought like kind of they kind of feel they might win Ah. by their brave braveness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think think that is one of reason nice that's a very good answer so i'm going to share a little bit about the beginning of the american independence so that american is called the u.s revolutionary war it started in 1775 and it ended in 1783 so you know a lot of you know this one's very unique because it was against the 13 colonies, right? So back then, they've only 13 states that were part of the quote-unquote United States at that point. And it was against Great Britain. And then throughout history, throughout the years, we have France, we have Spain, and we have the Netherlands also jo- joining the 13 colony military. So it was the 13 militaries, uh, 13 colonies, France, Spain, and the Netherlands all against Great Britain. So imagine four countries, right? Four countries against one. Mm. So the first battle started with the Battle of Lexington and Concord up in the Massachusetts area um, in in 19... uh, 1775 and it happened at midnight actually both of these war battles started at midnight because they thought the British thought that if they went quietly enough because in that area there is a river so people were like the soldiers thought if we went quietly in that night they won't be able to see us and that they and they won't know that we were there in the water and not behind the trees for example so they thought they can just ambush the colony army at night and going by water so there's like a special person special character in that story that i will share with you guys about a little bit later but that's kind of like the beginning 
of the American Revolution. The 13 colonies were like, we want our own independence. You know, we want to have a democracy. At that time, the Great Britain did not do that. They had a parliament, right? And that did not work. That system did not work for the U.S. So they were like, we want to be our own country. So we're going to fight. And then the trigger for that was called the Boston Tea Party. I don't know if you guys have heard any about it, anything about it. It was a very interesting revolution where Britain, because Great Britain is known for their tea, right? England is known for their tea. And they send a lot of tea to the United States. So a lot, the U.S. colonies at that point, on that night, they basically took all of the British important people they did a lot of bad things to them, but not like bad things, but more humiliating things, right? They took off all of their clothes. They put, you know, tar on their skin, which made their skin hurt very bad. And they also put feathers on the tar. The tar is kind of like glue. It's very, very sticky and hard on their back. And they're marching these British officials around. And then right then and there, at by the Boston p- Boston seaside there was a ship full of tea and then the colonials people just went onto the ship and started throwing them into the water right so Great Britain from that ship lost a lot a lot of money and that was kind of the trigger to the to the to the revolution so this is a very interesting start right you don't usually think of starting by throwing tea into the water but that's kind of how the idea of revolution kind of came to an end and how they actually actually started taking action to getting into the revolution. So we're going to start getting into the second sector, which is the characters, like the important people of the revolution, right? So we're going to start with the Korean Revolution. James, are you ready? Yeah. Right, so who do you think is a very important character during the Korean independence? I think one of the... <coughs> One of the important people is Yu Wan Sun, as she showed great bravery and great feeling that they should have Korea back from Japan's occupation. Mm-hmm, I see. How about you, Chloe? Said about the Korean people. Mm-hmm. Okay. So who do you think is the, one of the most important people? Okay, I've I researched it, and mm-hmm. um, many of Korean did it. Just almost all of Korean people mm-hmm. did it. But there was Im Gyu, Gyu Lim, and. Hyun Kim, who they open the like like uh, the facial the meeting. Mm. They open the meeting, and I think it was about 30, 30, 30, 33 people mm-hmm. who was in that meeting, and they try to make plan to be yelled and yeah to be yelled by to say for freedom to mm-hmm. yell for freedom and yeah i think they were important too yeah it's a very unique story i haven't heard of that before um tom who do you think is the most important person or group of people Any question? Yes. <coughs> it when time on independency, mm-hmm. time that independency or that time something someone who did. Um. So it can be any of them, right? Who do you, any important person during just the Korean independence? So it can be someone who's an activist, right? Someone who's you know yelling and marching with people it can also be someone from before when they're planning or like after when they're 
you know, when right after the independence, when we got the independence, right, who's an important person that kind of got the country t- together? Mm. I... I... saw mm-hmm. one of movie that tells about before the independency. Mm-hmm. He shoot the gun mm-hmm. to a uh, Japan's other state in English. Like president? First to stop Japan's plan. Mm. So he killed a very important person in the Japanese. Yes. Mi- well, let's say like military, or would it be like political party? Right, someone just important in that aspect, and then um, he killed him, which was a very yeah, important deal at that point. The uh, I forgot the she's. The uh, Hetongyong tried mm-hmm. to get booming from Russia mm-hmm. to get the Korea, and he stopped that with the killing. Ah, I see. Well, that wow. Okay, I think this is the first time I've heard of that story, so that's very interesting. Um, so, uh, who do you think is the most in- important character? I think the most of uh, famous people person is uh, An Chung-gun because he bought, bought the 100 million 1000 people of Japanese the police fight with them and he he lost his the uh, his last <coughs> finger mm-hmm. and, and he he fight when he kill many Japanese police but but he couldn't kill all of Japanese police but he he killed uh, almost half like so I think he is more famous. Wow, okay. Lucy, who do you think is the most important? For me, I think Yu Gan Sun is most famous because she did Tian Dong Ni Manset until she died. Mm-hmm. So I think she is most important person. I see. And Tom, did you have something to add? Mine is same to Sua. Oh, same as Sua. Okay. And then Luna. Um, I think like little children and students are very important because the Samir Undong mm-hmm. was basically caused by them mm-hmm. and the team who adult team who was like meeting mm-hmm. was what Chloe said. Mm-hmm. So I think they are important because like they were pretty young mm-hmm. but they were brave. Mm, they wanted to. They love their country. Mm. Yeah, that. Those are all very important people. Wow, I didn't know a lot of them, but now it's really nice to be able to hear some of their names and know a little bit of what they did. So, in the American Revolution, especially at the very, very beginning, a person that I found very interesting were actually two people named Paul Revere and William Dawes. So, what they did was they were sneaking around and they heard about the British plans to go either on land or by sea. So what they did is in the middle of the night, they rode on their horse all the way to the towns of Lexington and Concord where the battles were going to happen. And they they basically um, ride those horses all the way over there and told everyone that the British were coming. And so 
the British thought that no one knew, right? They would just sneak attack you. But it was a matter of fact that because of these two people, they rode all the way to do two different cities to tell everybody that the British were coming. And so by the time that the British people actually came, everyone is ready and ready to fight, you know? So there was still a battle, but it wasn't, it wasn't the win that the British people thought they would be getting. And I think that was very interesting. And if you do a little bit of re research on your own, there's a famous saying called one by land and two by sea. So what that really means is in the city or in the town that Paul Revere and William Das come from, there's a very tall kind of like a lighthouse, a little light tower. So what they did was they told the light tower guard to, if you see the British people on the water, put two lamps on the highest point. So the highest point, so when they ride out, they can see, oh, if there's two lamps, then the British people are coming by water. And if there's only one lamp, then the British soldiers were coming by land. So they were walking or riding horses. So that's the that way, right? The people of the towns in Lexington and Concord knew where to meet the soldiers, right? If you're gonna by land, you would meet them by the mountains or by the forest, right? If you're meeting by sea, you would go to the river. So it was a very interesting, you know, those two people often get forgotten by the American Revolution just because it goes for such a long time. But they're very interesting characters once you start getting into them. Um, does anyone have any questions so far? No? Not question, but we read uh, what you said, the story in Jenny's book, mm -hmm. the English class we read. Today. Wow. The stories. You read the stories? That's good that you know a little bit about them now. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go into our reflection questions. And the first one is, what do you find similar in, you know, in the stories to revolution and to freedom? You know, we know a little bit about Korean. We know a lot about Korean history now. We know a little bit of the American Revolution. What do you find similar? I'm going to start from Luna now. Um, I'm not like comparing America, but I have other countries. Yeah. So compared to South Africa, mm -hmm. they have voted mm -hmm. to get freedom or not. Mm -hmm. And but Korea didn't vote unlikely to South Africa. Mm -hmm. So there was different like systems, but there was still like they still did the voting, right? So how about you, Lucy? Did you find any similarities? Not really? That's okay. How about you, Sua? Mm. It's okay if it's a no. Did you find anything that's kind of similar? Um. Mm, the Yogansun and some most of many people say say them when say but some of that happen come to in Seoul mm -hmm. and there has like one hundred or one thousand people mm -hmm. and the Seoul come very the space of Seoul is very little and they they all say Deming ones and I think mm, the uh, people was kind of our Korea is very good country and no one can no one can no one can got our countries and Mm. Th that part, the people was the same, I think. Yeah. So, you know, the people's drive, you know, to protect their own country is very large. Yeah. How about you, Tom? I don't know other country, but mm -hmm. I know one of story mm -hmm. of in Korea. Um, the 
our country get by the Japanese whole apart mm-hmm. and we go to China mm-hmm. and there is a war to fight for get the country back and they get back mm-hmm. country mm-hmm. okay um chloe what do you think okay jace do first jace jace first okay what do you find similar between the fights for freedom uh so all the fights fights for freedoms and revolutions Mm -hmm. contained a lot lot of hardness Mm -hmm. but by the groups against them Mm -hmm. and the people of that specific country participated paid it the what do you call it? Uh, participated to independence day mm-hmm. <clears throat> to get their own country back yeah yes so that kind of heat is very large and the desire to be free from other countries is very large so they did they almost did anything that they could to get to that point um how about you chloe okay i think Mm-hmm. The similar, mm-hmm. was, yeah, similar between those two, like Korean and other country, mm-hmm. is that they made their plan to get ready to say or yell for freedom, mm-hmm. and get it, get ready to maybe fight mm-hmm. with the other countries like. For our United States, the uh, colon, it was Perfect. British, the Great British, and for our country, it was Japanese. Mm-hmm. So they made their plan to, yeah, to to fight or to yell for freedom. Nice. Yeah, that's a lot of very good insight, right? The two, you know, independence days, they are very different, right? They're very, very different. But there's still some parts that, you know, are very similar in both of them. Now we're going to look at the last question. In South Korea independence, what is the trigger for the people's fight for freedom? So we know that under Japanese occupation, Korea suffered a lot. But why do you think it, the suffering ended on March 1st, not earlier or not later? What do you think is like the big part where people are like, we need we need our independence now. What do you think, Chase? Mm. I think it's because Japan caused a lot of harm in our country, mm-hmm. and which made Korean people want wanting to get their own country back mm-hmm. mm, definitely uh chloe okay should i explain what is korean independence first or mm-hmm. just the answer okay. um you can just answer the question if you think you can add anything you think will okay. give more insight okay we kind of explain a lot mm-hmm. so by the explanation that we talk about the trigger for the people's active fight for their freedom was that they were mad of being treated badly by Japanese mm-hmm. and they were not able to be patient by that. So they gathered together and they hold an 
the national flag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they started to fight for their independence. Mm-hmm. And I think I. So, but the other friend student said mm-hmm. that the there was going to be like. Changdaesik, what what is Changdaesik? Like funeral? Ah, yeah, funeral for the king, mm-hmm. the his death for death. But they was trying, they were trying to do that at the same time, mm-hmm. and they cannot do on Sunday because of the the Christians like holy day for Sunday. Mm-hmm. So they tried to do. The March first was in Friday, mm-hmm. so Saturday. <laughs> okay, Saturday. So they did it on Saturday, and mm-hmm. they did the 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 yelling freedom. Mm-hmm. And the Saturday, and it's kind of contained with the king's death because they were trying to do him. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that is uh, one part of it. Okay, how about Tom? People are angry with Japanese kills queen and queens, mm-hmm. and they are mad. So they fight for independence. Independence Day because Sunday we need to rest and Saturday I don't know mm. so they do on March first. Okay. Mm. So, uh, so uh, what do you think is like the high point where people are like, I need independence now? Hmm. I think the I my 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 thing is same with the Chloe. Same with Chloe and Tom. How about you, Lucy? Can you tell the question? Yeah. So, which part of the people's fight for independence do you think is the high point? So, the high trigger point. Where the people are like, I need it today, like not yesterday, not tomorrow. Why March first? Because three um, March three was was the day we have to go to church mm. and. And March second, mm-hmm. they said they have to do championship of the Kuchu Queen Kuchu Kuchu Monday. So they did it at March first. I see. And then Luna at the end. I think Kuchu's death. Mm-hmm. Made them very very angry, mm-hmm. and they also didn't. They burned many schools mm-hmm. and houses, mm-hmm. and how they treated made Koreans to be angry. Mm-hmm. And the final trigger was Go Jong's death. It is not actually. We don't know if did they Japan did it or not, mm-hmm. but every many people. Just, just think that it is Japan, but there is no evidence or proof for it. Mm-hmm. That it was the Japanese who did it. 
All right. So we're gonna wrap up our conversation from there. I hope、um, whoever is listening、um, to our conversation, we will be able to learn a little bit more about what the Korean Independence Day stands for, and a little bit about the history of the U of the U.S. Revolution.、Um, independence is a very important day for a lot of countries, and as we discuss. Um, through these two countries specifically, I hope that it will lead to further thought and interest and in learning about history, about other countries, and about your own. So we're gonna end our conversation there. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.